Ever wondered how a woman can be so unloved that she had to pay another woman so she would be able to spend the night with her own husband? Well, that was the case of the person whose story we are going to be talking about in today's video. This woman was someone who was so unloved by her husband that when his household was being attacked while on a journey, he arranged his household in level of importance, and his first wife, who was supposed to be his first choice, was leveled next to his servants and concubines. The person we are going to be talking about is none other than the wife of one of the patriarchs of the Bible. Her name was Leah. Leah was so unloved, or should I say unlucky, that even her marriage to her husband was more or less like a servant being given out to a new master. Her approval was not taken into account whatsoever. But wait, how did she get into this mess? How did all this happen, you might ask? It all took place in this story. Once upon a time during the era of our biblical patriarchs, there was a family in the land of Padan Aram, and in this family was a lady named Leah. Leah was the first daughter of a man named Laban, who had sons and two daughters, Leah being the first daughter, and her sister Rachel the second. Leah was said to have been born with dull or weak eyes. Although the Bible doesn't give details as to what it means by dull or weak eyes, I personally think it might be talking about the strabismus condition where the eyes are misaligned. This dull or weak eyes of hers must have caused a lot of discrimination in her life, which includes being looked down on, abused by people around her, and even her family members as well. But all this was not enough. Things get much worse for Leah down the line. One faithful day, there arrived a man from a distant country, Canaan. This man was later discovered to be the son of Laban's sister, Rachel, who is ultimately their cousin, and his name was Jacob. He was the grandson of Abraham. Jacob had just come from his country, Canaan, to visit his uncle Laban, but with a secret mission, which was to find himself a wife from among his kindred. In this village, Jacob's eyes met Rachel, Leah's sister. Love sparked like the first light of dawn, and Jacob, with a heart brimming with affection, wanted to make Rachel his forever. Laban, the father of these sisters, nodded in agreement, but with a tricky condition, Jacob had to work for him for seven long years. Picture seven years passing by, each day a brick in the wall of Jacob's anticipation to finally marry Rachel. The sunsets whispered promises of love, and Jacob's heart beat in rhythm with the approaching wedding day. The day came, joy in the air, laughter weaving through the village. Rachel, dressed in the glow of happiness, was meant to be Jacob's bride. But, ah, here comes the twist. After the wedding had ended during the day, Laban, under the cover of night, played a cruel trick. On that sacred night when husband and wife were to become one, Laban covered Leah's face with a veil. He handed her to Jacob, leaving him unaware that it wasn't Rachel beside him, but Leah. Can you feel the heartbreak? Picture Jacob, expecting the warmth of Rachel's embrace, only to discover that the night was a deceitful dance. In that moment of intimacy, Leah found herself entwined in a story not of her choosing, but one woven by the hands of deceit and trickery. The stars witnessed this tragic play, and the night echoed with silent sobs. Hold on to this tale, for it weaves through the twists of deceit. Later that morning, the camel's back broke, and Jacob discovered that he had slept with Leah instead of Rachel. Upon discovering the cruel trick played by Laban on that fateful night, angry, confused, and heartbroken, Jacob confronted Laban, demanding an explanation for this unexpected turn. Laban, with a cunning smile, explained that it was a family custom for the first daughter to marry before the second. A custom that felt more like a dagger to Jacob's hopes. Imagine the confrontation. Jacob, feeling the sting of betrayal, faced with a choice. If he still wanted Rachel, he'd have to agree to another seven years of labor. In the shadows of that conversation, a pact was made, sealed with the bitter taste of an agreement that would shape Leah's destiny. A week after that night with Leah, 
A week filled with silent sobs and unspoken regrets, Rachel was finally given to Jacob. Yet the cost was heavy. Another seven years of hard work laid before him like an endless road. The village whispered about the man who toiled for love, but little did they know the price Leah paid. Now, place yourself in Leah's shoes. Unaware of the secret dance between her father and Jacob, she found herself in a marriage built on deception. Her sister Rachel cast shadows of resentment, and Jacob, with eyes that still yearned for another, painted Leah into the background of his affections. Leah, a wife unloved and unwanted, walked a path of perpetual heartache. Every smile she wore hid a multitude of tears. The village, unknowing witnesses to this tragic play, could feel the heaviness in the air when Leah passed by. And so, in the chapters of her life, Leah became a silent protagonist in a tale written with the ink of sorrow. Now the two sisters, both now married to Jacob, but one by the true choice of his heart, and the other, a bitter consequence of Laban's deceitful dance, lived together in Jacob's home. And Leah, like a forgotten lily in a garden of roses, found herself unloved and unnoticed. The Bible, the ancient storyteller of these tales, recorded that God himself saw her anguish. Can you fathom the depth of her sorrow for the heavens to take notice? In her longing for Jacob's love, Leah believed that if she bore him children, the warmth of a son's embrace might thaw the icy distance between them. Then God heard her cry and her husband Jacob became intimate with her and she convinced. The firstborn, Reuben, was named with a silent prayer. Behold, a worthy son. Oh, the ache in her heart, hoping that this child might be the key to unlocking the door to Jacob's affection. But the pages of her story turned, and each son she bore, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, echoed the same refrain, a desperate yearning for a love that seemed to slip through her fingers like grains of sand. God, witnessing Leah's unspoken pain, opened her womb. <laughs> but the love she sought remained elusive. Leah's journey, etched with the bittersweet ink of longing, painted a portrait of a woman who believed that through her sons she could build a bridge to Jacob's heart. Yet, with each child, the bridge crumbled, leaving her standing on the shores of unfulfilled dreams. The village, unaware of the divine intervention, could only witness a woman walking through life with the weight of unrequited love etched on her face. Now, as time went by in the tapestry of Leah's life, in her supposed new family, things become more and more unbearable for Leah as her stay in her marital home becomes more and more lonely. Lonely to the point where her husband Jacob doesn't even pass near her tent any longer, but instead spends all of his time with his second wife, Rachel. There came a moment that spoke volumes about her silent struggle. Picture this. Reuben, her firstborn, stumbled upon mandrakes in the fields. These weren't just ordinary plants because they were said to possess fertility-giving substance, and he gave them to his mother, Leah. As the sun dipped low, casting a warm glow on the village, Rachel saw the mandrakes with Leah. In her desperation, she pleaded with Leah, asking for those magical plants. But Leah angrily replied, wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now will you steal my son's mandrakes too? Rachel answered, I will let Jacob sleep with you tonight if you give me some of the mandrakes. Let's pause here a little. Can you imagine the statement Rachel just made? This is to say that she had the authority as to who Jacob sleeps with and who he doesn't. So that evening, as Jacob was coming home from the fields, Leah went out to meet him. You must come and sleep with me tonight, she said. I have paid for you with some mandrakes that my son found. So that night he slept with Leah. Genesis 30, 15, 16, NLT. Here, in the simple request for mandrakes, the stark contrast between the two sisters' lives unfolded. Imagine Leah, a woman who traded the tokens of potential fertility for a night with Jacob. In this heartbreaking transaction, the mandrakes became a bargaining chip in the silent battle for Jacob's affection. 
Leah, knowing that her husband's heart lingered with Rachel, used this moment to secure a night that would otherwise be spent with distant glances and cold shoulders. This scene, like a snapshot of Leah's life, revealed a woman who felt the desperation of her unloved existence, a life where love was elusive, where gestures of affection were traded like currency, and where the night, instead of being a blanket of warmth, became a cloak of sorrow. Leah's tale, written in the language of mandrakes and moonlit nights, was not a story of joyous celebrations, but a lament echoing through the corridors of an unfulfilled heart. One might think that her paying to be intimate with her husband would have been the highest form of sadness, but that's nowhere near it the next phase of Leah's life proves more sorrowful. As Jacob and his family left Laban's house, the air was thick with tension. News reached Jacob that his brother Esau, accompanied by a formidable army, awaited their return to the land of Canaan. Now, imagine this crucial moment. Jacob, like a strategist in the game of survival, arranged his family in a calculated order of importance. In the hierarchy of potential danger, Leah found herself in the forefront paired after the servants. If harm befell the servants, Leah and her children would be the next in line. Rachel, on the other hand, was placed in the last pair, seemingly shielded from immediate danger. This arrangement, like a chessboard of calculated risks, revealed a harsh truth. Jacob, in his maneuvering to safeguard his loved ones, unintentionally showcased the disparity in his affections. Leah, a wife who had already shouldered the weight of unrequited love, now found herself placed in the shadows of potential danger. Can you feel the weight of the moment? Leah, whose heart had longed for the warmth of Jacob's love, now stood not only in the shadows of her sister, but also in the shadows of a strategy that prioritized others over her. In this scene, Leah's story takes another turn, revealing the complexities of a life where love seemed to be an elusive companion. And so it was. The story of Leah's life wasn't one with a happy ending as her life, like a melancholic melody, played on, echoing the sorrows of a woman whose heart remained unclaimed. In the final chapters of Leah's life, the Bible tells us that she, along with her husband Jacob, was laid to rest. Leah's story, marked by unrequited love and the shadows of deception, found its conclusion in the silence of eternity. And so, dear listener, let's bring the curtain down on Leah's tale, a story not painted with the colors of a happy ending, but rather shaded with the poignant hues of unfulfilled dreams. Leah's journey, etched with tears and longing, found its closure in the pages of the Bible. In Genesis 49:31, it tells of the place where Leah was buried. It was a cave, a silent resting place for a woman who walked through life carrying the heavy burden of unrequited love. The cave, a metaphor for the shadows that marked Leah's existence, became the final chapter in a tale that echoed through generations. But what can we learn from Leah's story? It's a narrative that speaks of the harsh realities of unfulfilled desires, meaning that we don't always get what we want, and also the ache of seeking love in places where it remains elusive. Leah, in her quiet strength, faced a life where the script was written with ink dipped in the sorrows of unmet expectations. Yet, in the shadows of Leah's narrative, there's a glimmer of divine intervention. The Bible records that God saw Leah's affliction and opened her womb. It's a testament to a higher power that doesn't remain indifferent to the silent cries of a broken heart. Even when human love failed her, divine mercy bestowed the gift of motherhood upon Leah. And so, as we close the book on Leah's story, we carry with us the echoes of a life marked by sadness and divine grace. In the corners of her tale, we find a reflection of our own struggles and a reminder that even in the darkest nights, there can be a sliver of light. Leah's legacy lives on, not as a tale of a happy ending, but as a poignant chapter in the grand story of the human experience. Join us as we explore stories, mysteries, and chapters of the Bible.